Hi guys. All right. Okay. I have not been talking to you. Sorry about that. But normally, <clears throat> I've been over the last three years or so. I've been looking and watching you guys. Whoever's watching me, I'm watching back. So kind of keeping an eye on how everybody's doing. But as of late, the last few weeks, I have been watching the planet and the solar system which has been so amazing that I have not stopped and looked at individual peoples. So, yeah, if you have something you need to talk to me about, well, then just let me know, okay? Because I have been watching the bigger picture. So I was talking to somebody today, and I thought, well, I should probably say that to everybody. So um he was struggling with all of these energies that are here now and yeah they're huge they're big and they can appear overwhelming so the trick is that the only way that you watch all of the drama that's going on is if you can watch it from the bigger perspective now as you guys know gaia kind of put off changing to the fifth dimension so that they could continue to play but as you know, she's moving now because she has um, a plotted path to kind of a, a lifespan on a planetary level that she has planned as well. So um, she's moving faster than what she would normally move. So a lot of what you see that's planetary, you know, what you would consider earthquakes and um, hurricanes and Stuff like that, flooding and that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is all done to realign frequencies on the planet, to collapse the frequencies to go to a higher level, which is inclusive of all of the fractal energies that were in the third dimension and the fourth dimension. They're all collapsing into the higher dimensional frequencies that will include all those, but be more be more than what those were. Now that's translated by humans in many different ways and I'm going to start doing some videos where I will explain everything that I saw and everything that I can see in what much more detail but not on this video. This video is to let you you all know the people that I've been calling star seeds but I will probably call them something else eventually but for now let's just stick with star seeds and this is star seeds that have come from within this game and those that have come from without this from outside this game who came to Gaia when she made the call for assistance and we say help but it's not help like a human would call for help as in great need it was just more of a assistance call but for a planet, it was a big deal. And everybody came a-running, and those are the ones that I call star seeds. And you guys, no matter if you came from within the game, i.e. from a different planetary system, or if you came from outside the game, you were born with higher frequencies. Now, those higher frequencies are what you will rely on during this period of change. Whether or not you remember them and use them is totally up to you. Now, how you use them is by using everything that I've been trying to tell you to do over the last three years. And that is come out of the systems as much as you can, be as self-sufficient as you can, preferably outside of cities. Cities make it way more difficult, but it can be done in the city, so if you're in the cities... Because you didn't move, you can do it within the cities. It's just way harder. But what you're going to do is you are going to rely on those happier and happier moments. You're going to stay in the now. You're going to work on being happier and happier. And if you're having a bad time of it, you go back to the basics. Back to that happy moment that you can find in your lifetime. Like I've told you, my happier, uh, that nobody can touch, nothing can touch it is the moment that I held my children in my arms for the first time. And that is a moment. You can't stay there because very soon after holding them, 
Um, I started to worry about whether I was going to be a good mother, etc., etc. So I can't go any further than just that single moment when I held them in my arms, felt the weight of them, and looked into their eyes for the first time. This is just a matter of seconds that that works. But nothing can touch that. I can always go back to that moment, and I can do it over and over and over again. And you may have to do that in a very, if you're having a bad time. Then, as I've said, you go past that. What I use is music. Find pieces of music that nothing can touch, that you hear that music and you get lost in it. And nothing can touch those that music. And that music may change over time. But you need to always have, I would say, at least ten songs that you can listen to or instrument. Whatever songs they are. It can be with, with vocals or without vocals. Whatever it is that works, that gets you in that moment where you're happier and nothing can touch it. You also need to do this in quiet. So get away, get away from people and get into a place that is calm. I don't care if it's a bathroom with the door closed. Somewhere where you're alone to deal with these high energy moments. This energy is meant to force the issue with the humans and you are in a human body so you are being forced to make a decision here that's what the whole point is every human is being forced to make a decision you can opt to dwell on the past and run these memories through your head or worry about the future or you can use what I've suggested that you do and you're going to try to be in a quiet place happier and happier after the songs, what I do is I have a handful of some movies that I get lost in that nobody can touch me in. And I take as much time as I need. I don't care what else is going on. I go by myself and use those moments to stay high frequency. Now, as I've said, you were born with these high frequencies. You can access them. They are there. But you have to ignore all the rest of this stuff that's going on. You have to ignore the rest of the games and go to that happier, calm place. And this energy is so strong that meditation might not do it. It depends upon how good you are at meditating. Meditation, yoga, if it's used the old way, not the new way, not the new way for uh, simply stretching and um, exercise. No, I mean the old yoga way that includes all of the energy all the way down into your deepest part of your body, grounding yourself to the planet. Meditation going from um, all the way from source, all the way down through your body through to the planet. Now, I can tell you something that was really, really funny. And this is how easy it is to mess this up. Because, oh, I don't know, a month or so ago, I was really struggling with the physical body keeping up with these vibrations. Because remember, you are in a body that was in the third dimension, and it is having to change its frequencies too. So you have to encourage and be gentle and ask your body what it needs as well as your consciousness. So it keeps you very busy which is why I wanted you to pull out of those systems and try to be self-sufficient first so that you didn't have other things you had to do as this was happening. Because right now you've got to help your body make these transitions and your consciousness needs to stay on these higher vibrations and not be pulled into all of what looks like drama. Okay, now the funny story. For, I don't know, years... Since I learned to meditate, which was, what was it, 2010? Is that what I told you? Whatever it was, I think it was 2010 when I finally made myself learn to meditate. All of this time, I have been practicing pulling this energy from source all the way through the central sun, through our sun, through my high heart. Okay? That's what I would do. And I've got this line down, Pat. This energy flow is perfect in every way but my body kept falling apart and I couldn't figure out what the problem was well about a month ago I figured out what the problem was 
is that I was doing a fine job of that circle, but I did not take and include my body, nor did I connect it to the planet Earth. So I had this wonderful flow of energy from source to my high heart, which was my consciousness. Consciousness is rocking and rolling good. And it's doing a fairly good job of riding this energy wave for me. It, I'm doing a good job under the circumstances. So, but what I realized is I had not included my physical body in this. I couldn't just go to my high heart. I have to go to my heart. I have to go to the center of this body and then shoot out and include everything that has to do with this body and this energy beam and then take that down through my uh, body down into the center of the earth all the way through all of the earth energy and back up. And I had not done that. So I spent about a week correcting that issue. And that's somebody that knows how this whole thing works. And I had messed it up pretty badly, which is why I, my body just fell apart over the last year and a half. My body just really fell apart. So once I included that energy going through my body and through the planet, because I'm not good at physicality, I don't recognize it. Even after the ayahuasca experience, where I was, I was able to see how it all was built, how it all works, I still struggle with experiencing it and it, utilizing it in any way. So it was very easy for me to leave that out. So now I've included it. So now I've got to work with that and uh, allow my body to heal while still staying on the top of this huge energy wave that we're in the process of. Now, when it comes to humans, the humans are being put under a great deal of pressure to make a decision. I told you all this. There's a decision that has to be made. Are you going to stay in, are you going to go back to 3D vibrations, which is way, way in the past? If you do that for too long, you will become an NPC. You will go to an alternate planet and you won't even realize it's happened. The difference is that you will begin to see that you are living on a planet that is based on fear. Okay? And that's kind of the way that you know that you're on an alternate planet. Now, then you just have to, like, deal with it. I don't know how to get back to this planet. So, you're just going to be living on an alternate Earth that's based in fear, which has been built. There are many of them. So if you go back and you are living in 3D fear and anger and those vibrations, you will have to leave this planet. And, and all humans that live like that are becoming NPCs. There's only about 10% of their energy left from their consciousness that was here that's left in the bodies that are left on this planet. The rest of their consciousness has gone to an alternate planet that's in 3D. The same thing is true with the lower levels of 4D. So those lower levels of judgment that I've told you all back about that are heavy, heavy judgment, those planets are here too. Now what is happening is everywhere, I don't think I've told you guys this, but every human on the planet, no matter starseed or not, have got either a gecko and a pigeon, or sometimes one is left and the other. If, if you're really, if the human is really not having any fear at all, and there's no chance that they'll go to fear, then the geckos will not fight for that human. And it's just a pigeon that's left. People that are doing fear and judgment both have a gecko and a pigeon vying for that energy. And they're fighting really, really hard because their way of life is dying. Now, what is happening, and they don't realize it because, remember, they're in amnesia too, is these geckos and pigeons are trying to get people to, of course, the geckos are trying to get you into anger and fear. They're doing everything they can to get you to look at things that will make you angry or fearful. Pretty easy to do in the chaos that's around you. If you choose that, then... Hold on a second, and let's go to the pigeons. The pigeons will do the same thing in severe judgment. Now, there's many layers 
of pigeons. But these are talking about, ooh, really judgmental, really judgmental. So they'll get people to try to be really judgmental. Now, the reason for this is both those geckos and these pigeons live off the energy that a human uh, exhumes, you know, what comes from you, you know. Um, there's energy that comes from you. So if you are, um, what's the word? You're, I don't know. I don't remember what the word is right now. It's flying from my head. But if you're living in fear, then that's the energy that comes from you, from your body. And humans, like, we shoot out a bunch of energy. Doesn't matter what we're in, whatever frequency we're in, we shoot out that energy. And then a lot of times we don't real humans don't realize that we can get that energy from within, from from source. So that's the reason why humans will try to grab it from other people. They become energetic vampires, which just about every human has been in the third dimension and the lower fourth dimension. They're energy vampires because they don't know that they can get it from within. These ways of staying in the now, being happier and happier, using these other systems that I've tried to tell you about, that is a way of reaching and meditation. That's a way of getting that energy from within, not getting it from other people, places, or things. Okay? So, that energy that comes off of humans, that's what the geckos and the pigeons that are in the lower, well, all the pigeons, they feed off of that. You know, they feed off of it. They're not, they're very aware that they're pulling energy from the human beings, that they're taking that as you shoot it off, they're collecting it. And that's what they live on. Now, humans are doing that to each other, and that's what you are living on, and that's what humans have been living on for a long time. It's the same same thing. It's just humans don't realize that that's what's going on. And a gecko and a pigeons do know that's what's going on. So they consider humans kind of like cattle that they're milking every day. They're milking your energy every day. So the geckos want to keep you at fear and anger. And the pigeons that are on those lower levels, they want to keep you in really severe judgment. Okay, so that the, those are the frequencies that they collect. That's their favorite. That's the best milk of all, you know, like a jersey with a high cream level. It makes really good butter and cheese. Okay, so what they're doing is because the vibration on the planet is raising and there are uh, quite a few people that are, that are riding that wave, that are going higher. Well, if you go above, let's say about halfway through 4D, then all of these pigeons and geckos can't use that energy. It's like soured milk, okay? It, it doesn't work anymore. So they don't pay any attention to those people, but the energy level that's available from their herd, how much milk they're getting from their herd, is dropping tremendously because it's like a bunch of the cows are going dry in their eyes, so they can't milk them anymore. What a country girl analogy, right? Okay, so they've everybody has got a pigeon and a gecko or one or the other that's like trying to influence you. Now, both of these groups over time have played the role of demons, okay? The pigeons know that um that what what you're the humans are afraid of demons. So sometimes if you're really really high, They'll show themselves as a demon um, at your bedside, and it'll drop your energies really fast. And then they'll show themselves as an angel or something like that in your dreams, and it'll keep you at judgment where, okay, uh, this is how the religious fanatics are frequently. That's how come pigeons are frequently associated with religions because here we're going to save the day we will save you if you come this way and that's very judgmental so they keep you right where they want you to be geckos on the other hand are just like straight up demons they will look like straight up demons and just scare the bejesus out of you that way you stay in fear and then usually you get angry 
and fear and anger, fear and anger, and that's how they keep you at that vibration. Or humans, not you specifically, but humans in general. Okay, they're still trying to use these things that they have been using for a long, 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 long time. And they're trying to do it, but this wave of energy that Gaia has put on the planet to change everything, and the work that we have all done, everybody's done, good job, excellent, set these vortexes of energy in place to create big vortexes that Gaia is now using. All collected into this huge energy that's changing things all over the place. It also is affecting the solar system and beyond. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. However, being here in a human body is challenging. You really need to just try to stay on the top of that wave, man. You really do. Don't get sidetracked by the pigeons or the geckos, which means stay away from future thinking and past thinking big time. Stay away from it. Stay in the now. So, back to what is happening with the geckos and the pigeons. So, these guys are fighting for the humans that are left. And they're turning in, into NPCs. And the star seeds are trying to ride this wave that's outside of their range. And then these other humans are becoming NPCs. So, like I said, their herd is drying up. They're panicking. So, they're going after the people that are left. Okay. So, what they do is... <laughs> is let's say a gecko is after a human and the gecko wins and the human drops into 3D thinking, anger and fear. Well, what happens very shortly is they become, they can't stay on this planet because the frequencies are so high. And like I said, everything has a range. You know, you have to stay on the range of the planet that you're on. Well, they, they fall outside the range of this planet because they're being... They're going down into the 3D vibrations of anger and fear. So they flip over onto an alternate planet Earth, and the body that is left here drops to 10%. Well, 10% is not enough for the gecko to feed off of. So in front of them, their cow has gone dry. That's what happens. Same thing is happening with the pigeons. Let's say the pigeon wins a human, and they're able to effectively make the human stay in a vibration of severe judgment. That is happening a lot. Well, both of them are happening a lot. Because of all the things that are happening on the planet, there's just a lot of people that are going into fear and anger. A lot of people are going into severe judgment. Okay? So the let's say the pigeon has got the person. So they do the same thing. They get that energy from them, really get them to look here and look there and really go into severe judgment. Again, severe judgment is outside the range of what this planet is now. Now, you can jump into judgment and jump out, jump in, jump out. Okay, that's still available on this planet. But to stay in severe judgment for all day, all day, all day, and just live there, that is outside the range of this planet now. So that person will become an NPC. They'll have to go to an alternate planet that that is within the norm and they leave the body with 10%. The pigeon now has lost their cow. It's gone dry. They can't feed off of it anymore. Now, they don't understand what's happening. The geckos and the pigeons are in amnesia too. All they see is that their herd is drying up and they don't know what to do about it. And it's happening relatively quickly. So they're really in a panic here. The more panicked they are, the more intense they are on getting milk from the humans that are left that they can get energy from. Are, do you get my meaning? Are you staying with me? If you're not, watch this video again, okay? Alrighty? So, very, very important that you be aware that if you are not on the top of that this wave, if you're not riding this wave or doing your darndest like me with my head barely above the wave paddling as hard as I can in a life preserver in the middle of a typhoon well if you're not doing that then you're going to be down there bobbing in and out of those other vibrations and the second you get down there you're going to have a gecko and or a pigeon trying to affect you they could be in visions, it could be in nightmares, it could be in just getting you to look over here, kind of making a scene and go over here, over here, getting in your mind and, and kind of affecting you. They can if you let them. 
affect how you're thinking. So it's very important that you stay focused and in control of this thing. Okay? Now, is it easy for most of us? No, it's not. Now, as you all know, I have a neighbor who is my ex-husband who is a long, long-term dualistic physical player in this whole system, this whole game. And I have watched him over the last year really deciding which place he wants to go to. Now, he's decided for the time being to stay here. So it's like I told you, I am in the middle of this giant wave, in the middle of a cyclone, hurricane, typhoon, whichever part of the country you're from, and I'm in a life preserver paddling like mad to stay on top of this wave. He is an expert on the surfboard surfing the wave. It is extremely annoying. However, like I've said before, get you a long-term human that's chosen to stay on the wave and it will help you kind of balance a little bit. Okay? All right, so that's probably enough of this. Um, hopefully it will explain some of the ways that you're feeling. For those of you who are feeling fantastic, fantastic. You're doing a great job. Great, fantastic job. Keep doing what you're doing. And for those of you who need more assistance, I'm still here, still doing sessions. So uh, just call me, email me. It's down there in the description below. And just let me know. This is a tricky period of time, but you were born with this. The frequencies that will get you to 5D, they're there already, okay? Just don't pay any attention to the chaos. That's the trick. Remember who you really are. Ignore the rest. Because all it is is changing things over for where we all want to go, right? Remember that? Okay. Huge hugs, everybody. I love you bunches. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.